Welcome everyone to this session called Step by Step to Interview Success. I wanted to open up our session with this quote from management guru Peter Drucker. He says, the business enterprise has two and only two basic functions, innovation and marketing. I love this quote because he really simplifies what every business does. The innovation side of a business is their unique product or service that they sell to their client or customer. Then on the marketing side, that is how they communicate their product or service to their customers. So they have the product and then they communicate it to the customers. So now let's relate this to interviews. In an interview, you, as an interviewer, as an interviewee, also have an innovation and a marketing. So your innovation is your unique value that you can offer to the company. This is what makes you uniquely you. And this does not depend on the specific jobs you're applying to. So your innovation is your professional background, your education, your extracurricular activities, the skills you've acquired. These are the things that make you uniquely you. The other side of interviews is marketing. So marketing is how you communicate your value to the interviewer. Your goal in an interview is to persuade the interviewer to move you along to the next stage of the interview process. So an interview is actually a special type of persuasive presentation. So over this webinar, I want you to keep those two things in mind. One, your innovation and your marketing, and then also that this is a, pers a persuasive presentation. A little bit about myself. My name is Michelle. I'm currently in my hometown in Canada, a city called Waterloo, which is near Toronto. So it is morning, morning here. Before, uh, so five years ago, I moved to China and I started a company in China. And before moving there, I have lived and worked in six other countries all around the world. And I speak four languages. My international experience has equipped me to work with international companies, which is exactly what I do. Five years ago, I started Lead With Words with my husband and we specialize in presentation training for large international organizations. The purpose of our presentation training program is to help employees present their ideas clearly, persuasively, and confidently. So there's a lot of overlap between business presentations and the skills of interviews. These are some of our recent clients and they're clients from all kinds of industries. And we have worked with people in every different function. So you'll see there's a lot of German car companies. Airbus is a big plane manufacturer from France. We've also worked with van der Lande, which is Vivix company. And I mentioned earlier that he was the one who helped facilitate this webinar. We've worked with companies from Sweden, Singapore, China, and other countries also. And within these companies, we've worked with people from all different functions. So engineering and IT, so very technical backgrounds. We've worked with people from HR, finance, procurement, marketing. And the number one thing that all of these companies have in common is that they want their employees to be able to present their ideas clearly and confidently. And remember, like I said, an interview is a special type of persuasive presentation. So let's get into the agenda for this next hour. We're gonna do three things together. The first is I'm going to outline the four steps to standing out. So these are the first things you can do. This is the foundation of how you should approach preparing for interviews. So I'll quickly go through those four steps. And then in number two, I'll more slowly go through the four steps using an example of myself and a real job I applied to right when I graduated my master's program. And I was applying to management consulting 
And I want you to take these four steps in this example and apply it to whatever job field or sector that you are applying to. And then we'll end by q and A. I'll start by answering some of the questions, the most common questions that I received on the registration form ahead of time. And then we'll end with some time to answer your questions from the chat. So let's jump right into the four steps to standing out. So the very first step you should do, it's one that most people don't think of. Most people think about jumping right into the job description, but there's one thing to do before you look at the job description. And this goes back to the quote that I shared with you at the very beginning of innovation and marketing. So the very first step is to list your top accomplishments. Your top accomplishments are your innovation. They are what make you uniquely you. Your accomplishments that you've done in the past do not depend on what job you're applying to. So whether you wanna switch industries and go for something totally new, your accomplishments are still your accomplishments. Now these will become the stories that you'll share, your marketing, the communication in the interview. So that is the very first step, listing your top accomplishments. The second step is what most people jump to, the first step, is to break down the job description. So read it through really clearly and to think what capabilities need to be successful in this job. What capabilities will the interviewer then be asking me questions about in the job interview? So that's step two. Step three is to match capabilities. So that's where you now have a list of the capabilities that the interviewer will be looking for and you wanna match them with your accomplishments. So you think for each of your accomplishments, did you demonstrate that capability and did it add to your success in that accomplishment? Step three, that is a very key one. We'll be coming back to step three throughout the rest of this webinar also. So steps one to three are fairly simple. They're fairly quick to do. Step four is where the hard work, but the magic happens. Step four is to prepare structured interview responses. So this is to prepare in advance what you're going to say, how you're going to communicate your value to the interviewer. And I will give you a simple but very, very effective structure in how you can prepare your responses. So those are the four steps to standing out. One, list your top accomplishments. Two, break down the job description. Three, match capabilities. And four, prepare structured interview responses. So we're already on step two of the example. So like I said, I'm gonna run you through an example using me and real jobs that I applied to after my master's program. So you're gonna learn more about me in this section. So we're going to start with number one, list your top accomplishments. So here are five of my top accomplishments at the time of graduating my master's. Number one, I graduated number one student in my bachelor's and master's. Number two, I did an internship at the United Nations. Number three, I had lived in six countries on four continents. Number four, I learned Spanish and Portuguese on my own. And number five, I was a team leader on university projects. That is all you do in step one. So in this webinar, I'm using five accomplishments as an example. I'd say five is a great place to start. You can think of your biggest accomplishments but I also recommend for additional preparation for your interviews to expand this list of five into 15 accomplishments. So add more of them. You can think of the stories that you want to share with the interviewer. And you don't have to have all of your accomplishments being these really big major things. Maybe there was a project, for example, where you stayed 
every day late after work for two months to help your team and your colleagues finish up this project and to make sure it was completed by the timeline. That could be an accomplishment that you could add here and share with the interviewer. So again, I'm using five, but you can expand it and you can also have some more like less major accomplishments. So that is step one. We're now going to break down the job description. So this is a real job that I applied to. I was looking, like I said, in management consulting. So Deloitte is one of the big four accounting firms. And somebody here is an accountant, Shivaraj, you're in accounting, so I'm sure you're familiar with Deloitte. They also have a management consulting branch of the company. And so the job I was applying to was part of the management consulting branch. And I was applying to a business analyst role in their strategy and operations department. Now the business analyst role is the entry level of a management consultant. So on this exact job description, they had two different sections, an overview paragraph, and then they also had one called what we look for, where they bullet point things of what they look for. So all job descriptions will be different. They won't necessarily have these exact same sections. So whatever your job descriptions look like, just break down that. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to read through this overview paragraph and then we are going to break it down. So to look at certain wording and to think what capability is that implying? What do I need to be successful? What do I need to, what capabilities do I need to have in order to be successful for that part of the job? So here we go. The business analyst strategy and operations program gives you the ability to discover your professional passions through a variety of project experiences. As a business analyst in our strategy and operations practice, you can have the opportunity to help market leading client organizations tackle their complex business problems and drive tangible results. You will gain exposure to a diverse set of industries clients, and project roles. In addition, you can contribute to Deloitte Consulting LLP, Deloitte Consulting, by assisting in the development of project proposals, presentations, and industry publications. So again, that is the overview paragraph. Now I'm gonna give an example of what we're going to be doing to break it down. This one sentence stuck out to me. I as a business analyst, I will be helping market leading client organizations. That is going to be part of the job. So the capabilities that are associated with helping market leading client organizations, I put down these two, there could be more. I wrote that you would need to be a good communicator and service oriented. So management consulting is all about serving your clients and I think having good communication and that service mentality will be necessary to be successful in this business analyst position. So that is an example. Now I'm gonna give you a couple minutes to read this on your own and to take different parts of this overview paragraph and think what are the demonstrated capabilities that the interviewer will be looking for based on this. So read it through and We'll look at it as a group in a couple minutes. All right. So I already mentioned the first one, help market leading client organizations, good communicator service oriented. The next one is you'll be tackling complex business problems. So the capabilities that I thought you would need to be successful for that were to be a problem solver. The next one is you will gain exposure to a diverse set of industries, clients, and project roles. So I put you need to be adaptable and a fast learner. So especially as uh, this entry level position, they are not going to expect you to know everything about the different industries that you'll be working with. You don't need to have that expertise, but you do need to be adaptable and you need to learn quickly. 
The last part is you will assist in the development of project proposals, presentations, and industry publications. So the capabilities I associated with that were you need to have excellent written communication and attention to detail. So these are just some, I think there would be more capabilities that you could draw out, but just to give you an example of how to do this, these are the capabilities that we'll be looking at. So already just by reading one paragraph in the job description, we have picked out so many different capabilities. And again, these are the capabilities that the interviewer will be asking you questions about. So moving on, the next part of their job description was a part called what we look for. And I'd say this is easier to think of the capabilities because it's more bullet pointed. So let's go ahead and do that. What we look for, number one, minimum 3.5 GPA and strong performance in your major. So for me, the associated capability that I thought of, you can also share your thoughts in the chat, would be excellence. If you're looking for someone who is self-motivated and has an, excellence perform an excellent performance record. The next one, demonstrated leadership and team building capabilities. So varsity sport, club leadership, et cetera. It's interesting too that they include the sports and club leadership. So they're not necessarily looking for team leadership in a business. So for that one, the capability, I put leadership and teamwork. Number three, work experience or high impact internships. I put work experience. This is easier than the overview paragraph. <laughs> Number four, high quality analytical and problem solving skills. I would associate analysis or problem solving with that. Number five is exceptional interpersonal and communication skills. You need to have excellent communication. And number six is a willingness to travel, which is required. Management consultants will be traveling pretty much from Monday to Friday every single week. So this is a definite requirement. And for that, I put adaptability. You need to show that you're adaptable. So after spending a couple minutes looking through the job description, the overview paragraph, and then the what we look for, we have come up with some really good capabilities. And these are going to be the things that we want to customize our interview responses for. Because again, we know that the interviewer will be specifically asking us questions to see how we've demonstrated these capabilities. So that is step two, breaking down the job description. We're going to move into step three now, match capabilities. This is a very important step. And in this step, you take your top accomplishments on the left hand side. So that is what you did in step one. And then you match the capabilities that you found in step two with your accomplishments. So I'm going to go ahead and share which capabilities I think match with my accomplishments. And I'll give a bit more background information into each of my accomplishments. So number one, graduated number one student in bachelor's and master's. The corresponding capabilities I put were excellence because of my high GPA, communication because my bachelor's and master's had a lot of, of reports and projects and presentations. So communication was necessary to get those high grades. And then lastly, I put analysis down because my bachelor degree was in international economics and my master's was in international business. So there was a lot of analysis that I needed to do. So those are the three capabilities with that one. Number two, my internship at the United Nations. I put four capabilities here. One, that was work experience. And at that time, this internship at the United Nations was really my first official job, you could say, in a large organization. I was a lifeguard prior to that, and I did talk about lifeguarding in some of my interviews. That was one of my other um, accomplishments that I listed when I had the longer list of 15, but I'm not including it here. But that was really my work experience at the time. I also put in excellence because it is difficult to get any kind of internship or job at the United Nations. They were looking for top performers. 
I put analysis also because I was working in the division of international trade and my whole internship was about writing a research paper and analyzing the economic and international trade trends over the last 20 years. So definitely a lot of analysis went into that. And lastly, I put adaptable because this internship was in Chile in South America. And so I had to adapt to the new setting, new culture, new language. I was the only Canadian at the UN there as an intern. And I was actually the first Canadian they had ever hired as an intern. So I, there was definitely a lot of adapting for me to do there. Number three, lived in six countries on four continents. The capability I put there was adaptable. I needed to adapt to each of those different countries. Number four, I learned Spanish and Portuguese on my own. I put that as excellence. It shows that I was self-motivated. I also could include fast learner because when I was living in Brazil, studying part of my master's program, I learned Portuguese from zero to intermediate advanced in five months. So I could definitely include the fast learner aspect there. And number five, team leader on university projects. The capabilities I put were leadership, teamwork, and communication. So that is step three. Up until now, this is fairly straightforward and fairly quick to do. We're gonna now move on to step four and prepare structured interview responses. So I want you to remember the structure of how to share your interview responses with this image and the word CAR, C-A-R. So what CAR stands for is context, action, result. So this is how you can share, market, or communicate your value to the interviewer. You start with your context and you start by describing the context of your accomplishment. Now your accomplishment may be on your resume, but recruiters and interviewers go through a lot of different resumes and they might not read it very in depth. So you need to remind them of what your accomplishment is. So give a context to what it is. It also might be true that it's not on your resume. So you'll be sharing with them for the first time. Then the action is what was your action in the accomplishment? So what was your role? What did you do? It might also be that it was a team, like your team accomplished something, which you can mention, but you also wanna make sure that you specifically say what was your role on the team. They are not, the interviewer is not hiring your whole team, they're hiring you. And then lastly is the results. You wanna share the results with the interviewer. So how this looks is you have step three, your accomplishments and capabilities on the left-hand side. And then you add the car format on the right-hand side. So for each accomplishment and capability, you will fill out a car response. So if we relate this back to the quote I shared at the very beginning, the left-hand side is your innovation. That is your unique value to the company. And then the right-hand side is the marketing, is how you communicate your unique value. So let's get right into an example of how the car format looks and a potential question the interviewer could ask. Tell me about a time when you had to analyze information and make a recommendation. Now, remember, we can predict that they might ask a question something like this because we know that they're looking for analysis and problem solving skills. So we can prepare in advance. So here's how it looks. You go back to step three and you look on the right-hand side capabilities. In my example, in my case, analysis came up twice in number one and number two. So I need to pick one of those accomplishments to then expand. So for this, I'm going to expand on my internship at the United Nations 
And then with the emphasis on analysis and problem solving. So here's what the car format will look like. Context. I did an internship in Chile at the United Nations ECLAC, which stands for the Economic Commission for Latin America and the Caribbean in the Division of International Trade. During my internship, I wrote a major self-directed research paper on Canada's relationship with the region of Latin America and the Caribbean. So that's the context, the basic context for the interviewer to know. I next move into the action. I conducted quantitative and qualitative research in trade and investment. I analyzed trends in the past 20 years and made policy recommendations based on these trends. So again, that was specifically what I did. My role was to analyze these trends. Then the result is at the end of the internship, I presented my report to the head of the Division of International Trade. This research will help facilitate business development planning for Canadian companies interested in trade and investment in Latin America and the Caribbean. So one of the reasons why I love this car structure is that it very clearly helps you structure your answers. Context, action, result. What it also does is it gives you the confidence to know that you are sharing with the interviewer the key components of a response. Another thing is that oftentimes when people get nervous and they haven't prepared in advance, then they don't know when to stop talking. They don't know if they shared enough information. So they tend to just keep talking on and on and on and their answers become very long winded and confusing. So this structure is great to help you know exactly what to say, nothing more and nothing less. Now, so what you'll see is we just filled out the car format for the internship at the United Nations with the emphasis on analysis. You'll see that there's three other capabilities also under this internship work experience, excellence, and adaptability. So what you can do to prepare is you can actually write out a car format for each of those three other capabilities. So one specifically highlighting my work experience at the United Nations. That will be fairly similar to the analysis one because I was doing a lot of analysis. Excellence could maybe more have the emphasis on the, the application process and how it was very prestigious to get accepted. You can focus on that. The other part is the adaptability. I didn't mention at all in the analysis car that it was in a new brand new culture. I was the only Canadian there. All of my colleagues were practically native Spanish speakers. There were some Brazilians and Dutch and French, but they were, um, they all spoke Spanish. So I could really, talk about how I needed to adapt using that accomplishment of my internship at the United Nations. So like I said, it is hard work, but if you do the hard work to prepare, you are going to be so well prepared, you'll be a lot more confident going into your interviews. So we're gonna look at another car example. So here's another question that we could predict the interviewer will ask us. Tell me about a time when you demonstrated leadership on a team. And we can think this because very clearly they were looking for leadership and teamwork. So I go back to step three, matching the capabilities, and I look where I have leadership and teamwork. And for me, that is number five. When I was a team leader on university projects. So I'm gonna write out a car format emphasizing leadership. So here's what it looks like. This time, I won't interrupt the, the response by saying context action result. You can just read along with me. While studying my master's degree in Vienna, we had a three month consulting project for a company. There were 16 other students on this project and we divided into four sub teams. 
I was a leader of one of these sub teams. It was my responsibility to lead my team and also coordinate with the other leaders. Besides being the team leader and doing a lot of the work, I also presented the midterm and final presentations to the client. The result was that we received great feedback from the client and a top grade on the project. So again, the CAR format allows you to make your answers short and sweet, but easily digestible for the interviewer. I'm not adding all of this extra flashy information that will just dis distract from the core message I wanna share. Another huge benefit of the CAR format is that you can structure your LinkedIn profile also. So I recommend in your employment section on LinkedIn, you can have three different bullet points or more than three bullet points, but the idea is to first share the context, then share the action of what you did, and then at the end, share the results. So it's a great way and it's more applicable than just these behavioral interview questions. So those are the four steps to standing out. One, you start by listing your top accomplishments so you know what your innovation, your unique value is. Then you break down the job description to find out what capabilities will be successful in the candidate. Then you match capabilities, what they're looking for, and then what you have in your accomplishments. And lastly, you prepared structured interview responses in the CAR format. So we're now entering the Q&A phase. I received a lot of questions in advance on the registration. So I've taken the most common questions and I've prepared responses to those three. And then after I go through those, we'll go into the chat and I will answer the questions you have in the chat. So let's move on to the first question that I got the most. So this was, tell me about yourself. How do you answer this question? I very much understand that this can be a daunting, scary question to answer. So I'm gonna walk you through exactly how to prepare for this. This is an excellent opportunity to talk about your top strengths and to summarize why you are an excellent candidate for that job. So here's how we do it. The very first step to do when you prepare for this is you want to identify what your top three strengths are that match what the company is looking for. So again, you go back to step three and you pick three of those capabilities that they're looking for that you wanna emphasize. So let's go ahead and do that. Here's step three. So out of all of these capabilities on the right, I chose, for me, I wanted to emphasize excellence, adaptable, and then leadership and teamwork I combined into one. So I have excellence three times here, adaptability twice, and then leadership and teamwork at the bottom. So I pick those three. These are my top three strengths. Now here you can see that I've modified the wording. I did that because instead of just saying I am excellent, I modified it a bit to make it flow more easily in the interview to say I am self-motivated or alternatively you could say I am a top performer or I am driven any of those words you could use the next one I kept the same adaptable and then number three is again I modified it a bit to say I am a natural leader and collaborator so this is the very first thing you do when you want to answer the tell me about yourself question but this is also excellent to help answer the questions, what are your top strengths? Or why should we hire you? You want to go to these three things, and then you can share a little bit of the accomplishment. So to evidence to back up what you're saying to answer those questions. So after we have the top three strengths, the next part of answering tell me about yourself is to create a story, a flowing story, that incorporate these three strengths. So on the next slide, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna have the text, my whole answer of tell me about yourself up. I'm gonna read it through 
And then we're going to take a little bit of time to analyze it, just like we did the job descriptions. And you can see where I incorporated self-motivated, adaptable, and natural leader and collaborator. So this is the response that I prepared. Again, for those interviews, I said this response in all of my interviews where I was asked this question. And I prepared, for this one, I did, I did it word for word in advance, and then I practiced making me speak in a more natural way so it didn't seem like I just had it memorized. So here's what it is. Tell me about yourself. I've been a competitive athlete for the majority of my life, and swimming was my main sport. I used to train with Olympians, and I was in the water 14 to 20 hours per week. My coach regularly motivated us by saying, go big or go home. Since then, I have applied this motto to every aspect of my life. I graduated top of my class with the highest GPA in both my undergraduate degree in international economics, as well as my master's degree in international business. I've also applied the motto of go big or go home, literally, by not staying home. I have lived and worked in six different countries all around the world, including doing an internship at the United Nations in Chile. When I stepped off the plane in Santiago, I didn't know a single person. I had to adapt to the unfamiliar new setting, culture, and language. I wouldn't have been able to survive let alone attain success if I hadn't had the courage to proactively reach out and collaborate with others. This has led me to become a natural leader and collaborator, which enables me to drive and deliver value through people. So you want to make sure your response is it's condensed, it's under 90 seconds, and I was sharing a story and I was linking it, and so they know more about me as a person. So this first part, I really emphasized that I was self-motivated, driven, a top performer. I talked about how I used to train with Olympians and I was in the water a lot of hours per week. And then also taking that motto of go big or go home into, into my academics, so graduating top of my class. I then transition by using that same motto, go big or go home. I use that to transition into my experience of living abroad. And it was mostly studying that brought me abroad, but also again, the United Nations also brought me to Chile. And so the second main paragraph there is where I talked about how adaptable I am. So living and working in all these different countries and then needing to adapt. And something to note here is I only talked about adapting to Chile. There were two other countries that I lived where I didn't know a single person when I arrived, Brazil and Hong Kong. So I could have said the same thing about landing in those, you know, stepping off the plane in Sao Paulo or Hong Kong and not knowing a single person, but I didn't want to distract from my key point. So I really focused in on Chile and it's part of the story. Then from there, the last paragraph is where I talk about being a natural leader and collaborator. So instead of relating and talking about my time on the university project in Vienna, that car example I gave, I instead wanted to make it more flow, the story. So I talked about my time in Chile, needing to have the courage to reach out and collaborate with others. So I will say, this is hard work to answer this question well. This may seem like I wrote it instantly, but I did not. I wrote and rewrote and edited and perfected this over a long time. I got input from my family members. And so I just want to encourage you that this interview prep takes effort. And don't get discouraged if it's not exactly what you want it to be right away put in the time, put in the effort, get the feedback to really understand how you can market yourself and market your innovation in the best way possible to the interviewer. So that is how to answer the tell me about yourself question. The second question I got a lot in the advanced registration 
is how to answer, what's your expected salary range? And so to answer this question, we actually have a video on our YouTube channel that answers this exact question. It's called avoid the biggest salary negotiation trap. That's my husband there, Mike. He's the one who does the video. So I'm going to show you right now how to find this on our YouTube channel. All right. Can you see our YouTube channel up on the share screen? You can just type a yes into the chat. Okay, perfect. So this is our YouTube channel. We create professional development videos on the topics of presentation skills, communication, and leadership. It's really easy to find on YouTube. You can just type in lead with words like that into the search bar or also lead youtube.com slash lead with words. When you get to the channel, you'll find the video on salary negotiation right here. So avoid the biggest salary negotiation trap. It is eight minutes long. It's one of our most viewed videos and it has over a hundred likes. So if you do watch it, please give it a thumbs up if you got value from it. We really appreciate that. So there's that video. And I also want to show you a couple other videos that are really applicable to job seekers. So you can see these are our recent uploads. And then here is our presentation skills playlist. Right here on the right hand side, you'll see there's a video called presentations. It's not a race. And this video is all about how to slow down your speaking speed. It's very common when people get nervous that they speak very quickly. But you need to think about it from your audience's point of view. In this case, it's the interviewer. If you can slow down your speaking speed, it'll be a lot clearer and easier for the interviewer to get what you're saying. So I highly recommend you check out that video. You can also scroll down a little bit more. We have a communication playlist here. And this video is called Stop Using These Four Types of Influence Killing Words. And that's also important so that you can be aware of some of these influence killing words and then not use them when you're in the interview. We also have some leadership ones down here, how to say no without being rude, how to give negative feedback, and a lot of other things. We have about 45 videos. So I highly recommend you check out our YouTube channel, watch that salary negotiation video, give it a thumbs up. This is also where we'll be posting the recording to this webinar. So in order to get notified, you can subscribe, hit that red bell right there. Now I'm not signed in, but if I was, there'd also be a notification bell right beside. So you can click that bell icon to then receive an email notification when we post the recording to our YouTube channel and as we post other videos in the future. So I, I would love if you would subscribe and share our account with your friends. So now I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint. All right, can you see the PowerPoint now on the sharing screen? You can say a yes in the chat. Okay, perfect. So the last question I received a lot in advance is a variation of this. How do you answer? Can you tell me more about the gap in your employment history? So this is one way the interviewer might ask it. Another way would be something like, can you run me through your resume? Or they can ask any other way. So what I would say, how to answer this first and foremost, is if you do have a gap in your employment history, you need to be honest with the interviewer. A lot of people right now with COVID have lost their jobs, they've been laid off, and this is common, especially right now with COVID, but even before COVID, companies restructure, they downsize, layoffs happen. So just very clearly say, I was laid off. Or if it's a medical leave, say, I was on medical leave. Or I was helping out a sick family member. 
So be very honest. Another one would be if you did take a couple months off to go traveling around the world between jobs, then you can say, I was traveling, I traveled to these places and here's the lessons that I learned and how that will add value to your company. So be honest with this answer and then also do not say anything bad about your prior employers. That is just not good. So don't say anything bad. <laughs> So we just finished off the Q&A that I received from the registration. So now it's time to open it up to the chat. If you have any questions about what we talked about in this webinar or other questions at all about interviewing, I'll answer them now. And then before we go, I will share with you some more free resources and some templates that you can download to help you also with your interview and CV preparation. So let's go to the chat now and see what questions you have. Okay, so Pratik, you wrote, why are you looking for a job change or a new opportunity? How to gracefully answer this without saying bad things about your current employer? That's a great question. I think one of the most simple things to do in that case is just say, I'm looking for more of a challenge or I'm looking to, um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking for more of a challenge or I'm looking for a position that better fits with my skills and my interests. One of the things, for example, I used to work before I moved to China, I worked in finance at a Canadian insurance company. And while it was a great position for the time being, my passion is not in finance. So when I moved to China, I ended up starting my own company. But if I was applying to other roles, I would have just clearly said, I'm, I'm good at finance, I can do it, but it's not my passion. So I'd love to trans transition into a different opportunity. And Renga, you ask, what type of support are you providing to the job seekers? I guess that's uh, for me individually. Right now, I am doing this free webinar to support. The recording is going to be up. I'm not offering any more services at this time because we are really, my company is really putting a lot of effort into developing an e-learning program for our presentation skills. We have also been hit hard from COVID, so we need to change from our in-person to e-learning. So right now we're developing that. But after I develop, we finish that e-learning program, the plan is to develop an e-learning program specifically for job seekers at an affordable price. So this session, what I include here, will be one part of that e-learning for job seekers, and it will expand more also onto how to answer some more common interview questions, as well as how to prep your CV, your cover letter, et cetera. So that would be the help I would be assisting for job seekers in the future. Okay, so Sonu, you have a great question. How to handle questions asked about your strengths and weaknesses? Strength is comfortably handled, however, how to deal with weakness to elaborate in a more graceful way. Yes, everybody has weaknesses and it is hard to talk about. So like I mentioned in the tell me about yourself question, you first wanna come up with your three strengths. So after, you, so I'm talking about the strengths right now. After you come up with your three strengths, I am self-motivated, adaptable, and a natural leader and collaborator. If I was answering the question, what are your strengths? I would add the evidence. So adding an accomplishment to back up. Why am I self-motivated? Why am I adaptable and a leader and collaborator? On the weakness side, I would say you need to be honest. What are your weaknesses? Now you don't want to say something like, I work too hard or I'm too much of a perfectionist. I think those are very weak answers to that question. So when I was preparing for these job interviews, the weaknesses that I thought of myself were two main things. One was that I am a huge extrovert and an external processor. So what that means is, is I love to be around people and I love to talk through ideas with other people. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing, but what it can be bad is 
if I should be doing independent work by myself, but I want to be with other people and discuss with other people, which if I do that too much, then I'm going to be taking up their time and causing their productivity to go down because I want them to listen to me and help me talk through things. So that would be an example of a weakness. Again, there would be a strength side of that, but I genuinely think that is a weakness for me. Um, my husband says it to me all the time. He's more of an introvert. I always love talking with him, running him through ideas. And he's like, Michelle, you just need to do this by yourself right now. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I got to work on that. Another weakness would be, I'd say that in general, I can be sometimes stubborn with accepting a new example or a new idea until I really hear the reasons why the new idea, why they want the new idea to go forward. So I think that could be one of my weaknesses also. So I think the key is with the weakness, you need to say the weakness, how it could be a weakness, but then also show that you are overcoming your weakness and how it wouldn't affect um, your job. All right, so to end off this webinar, I wanted to share with you some free resources to help you to keep growing. The first I mentioned before about our YouTube channel. So we have free professional development videos there, youtube.com slash lead with words. And the three here, the thumbnails I have on the left are the ones I recommend that you start with and they will really help you with your job interview prep. The next resource I'd love to share is two templates that I created in my Microsoft Word. So I have a template to help you with your CV and then a template to help you more with your interviewing. So essentially, I've taken these four steps that I talked about in this webinar and put it in a, in a Word document template to help you walk through the steps in a really logical order. So you can gain access to these two Word documents at our website here, leadwithwords.com slash interview. So I wanna thank you all so much for participating today. There, you're already a step ahead in your interview prep and your job search by attending this and just having this desire to learn. I wish you the best of luck with your job search.